Hey guys, welcome to your morning announcements. I'm Len McAllister. Today for lunch, we're going to have cream chicken, mashed potatoes, biscuit, fruit, and veggie bar. Tomorrow's breakfast is going to be a donut. Um, juniors need to check their emails regarding prom. There's going to be an FFA meeting today in Mr. Goldfish's room during Bobcat, and there will be a high school book club meeting in Miss Whiting's room with the library on the 16th. <clears throat> uh, looking into the week, we got one act public performance at 7 o'clock tonight. Um, district play production 8.30 on Wednesday. Thursday is winter activity pictures, high school basketball at Summerlin versus Neely. JV girls are five in the ox gym, three quarters. JV boys, two quarters in the main gym. Varsity girls, six o'clock, and varsity boys, 7.30. And then there's girls wrestling at Wayne at five o'clock. Junior high boys, Friday, have wrestling at O'Neill at four o'clock. Um, high school boys wrestling at Howells at 9.30 on Saturday. High school basketball at Hardington, Newcastle. on Also on Saturday. That's all for this week. And that's all for your morning announcement. What up? Welcome back to the Preston Department interview. I'm Pete back at it with again. I'm going to go over class of D1's bracket, D2's bracket. Our football schedule since the year is now over. And then our stat leaders for the year. Um, Sandy Creek played Lords. That was correct. Uh, they blew them out, winning 63-8. to eight. That's crazy for a semifinal game. And then we ended up losing to Stanton in a very, very good game, 48-34. to 34. We had a great year, but it unfortunately came to an end. Stanton and Sandy Creek will play Monday, November 25th at 2.45 at Memorial Stadium. I think it will be a really good physical game. Both teams are run and gun. But I do have Stan going back to back. I mean, no one's been able to slow him down this year. We were the best team to slow him down. And as you can see, they still scored 48 points. So it's very impressive what they got going over there. And then on the class D2 bracket, Riverside played BDS and they beat them 50 to 20, which is absolutely shocking to me because I thought BDS was way better than Riverside, but apparently not. Uh, and then Central Valley played Archangels Catholic, the one seed, and they beat them 50 to 8. Archangel Catholic, it must have been a fraud, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure, um, and those two teams, Central Valley, who is the, what seed, the uh, three seed, I think, four seed, four seed, playing Riverside, who is the, uh, what seed are they, what seed are they, um, I don't know what seed they are, I can't find their name, uh, six seed, four and six playing each other, I, they would play November 25th at 10-15 at Memorial Stadium. I do have Central Valley winning this game. They played Riverside earlier in the year, and they beat them pretty easily. I mean, Riverside must have got something going on there because they did lose their starting quarterback, so they must be doing something well over there. And now we're going to go over Summerlin's schedule. We finished the year 10-2. and That is a new school record. And finished the district 4-1. That would be second place behind Stanton. Our schedule... Uh, we started off the game, started off the year playing Newman Grove at St. Edward. We beat them sixty to eight, and then we played Crofton, and that was a very well fought game. We won thirty two twenty eight. Beat Madison fifty two to zero. That was our homecoming game. Lost to Stanton forty four to thirty four. An early the game. Beat Plainview in a shootout sixty to forty two. Shut out Lutheran High fifty five to zero. Beat Laurel Concord Coleridge fifty nine fourteen. Beat Elkhorn Valley 55-12 at Elkhorn Valley. Then they came here for playoffs. Beat them 45-8. Shut out South Loop in the second round of playoffs. 46-8. Played Croft in the third round of playoffs. And a very well-fought game. I think that was probably one of our better games of the year, in my opinion. Beat them 48-38. And then lost to Stanton the 15th. 48-35. In my opinion, a very good game. I mean, it was a shootout. But then they got a late uh, interception that kind of... Shut the game out. And now we're going to go over our stat leaders for the years. 
Uh, receiving yards per game, Sam led us in that category with 86.5. Alec, 67.8 yards per game. And then yours truly, Preston, only 25 yards. I mean, I don't care really. Sam's kind of our main target this year. Racking and then some insane catches. Uh, and then Alec, I think he set like the career record for most receiving yards in the career. Be- beat Sam out by like 20 yards. Rushing yards per game. We have Matthias Wagner with 87 and a half. Uh, I mentioned the playing dude game was big. Help to that. And the South Loop game was probably, no. Or was the Laurel game? I think it was the Laurel game. He had like 300 yards rushing or something. Set a school record. Michael with 57 yards. And Steven with 23 yards. Probably because of the Newman Gross and Ed game. Total touchdowns. We had Alec with 21 total. Sam with 17 total. And Matthias with 17 total. Uh, tackles per game, uh, our senior defensive leader, Keaton Fioletis, with 11.5 tackles per game. Ethan Kester, solid junior linebacker who will be a big, big target next year. He had 10.5 tackles per game. And Alex Schindler around the bowel with 10 tackles per game. Sacks, you're showing again. Keaton Teal, five sacks per game. Mike, two. Oh, this is on the season. All right. Uh, Keaton had five total. Michael with two and AJ with one. Uh, interceptions, I don't know if this is true or not, but we had to lead the state in interceptions. I think we had like 19 or 20 on the year, so that's very impressive. Sam Mudd with eight, set school record in the game. Near the head set a school record in the game, I don't know. And then he set the season record and the career record, beat me out by a few. And then I was second with six interceptions on the year, and Alec had two. I know Michael had two, someone else might have had two, but I know that. Passing touchdowns, obviously only Michael, 33 touchdown passes on the year. That's pretty impressive. Receiving touchdowns, Sam with a solid 17. That's probably leading D1. Uh, Alec with 13, and then me with four. Uh, rushing TDs, Matthias had 17. Michael had 17. Alec had six. Uh, fumble recoveries. Um, Ethan had two recoveries. Ruger had one, and Bo Allers had one. Uh, Michael, his complete per- completion percentage this year was 64.5%. That is very good for how much we threw the ball last year. And then Michael's QB rating is 125.7%. I'm pretty sure the high is like 130 or 140. That Anything above 110 for QBR percentage rating is very, very impressive. And that will do it for today's video. Thank you for watching our episode today. And thank you for supporting us all throughout the football year. Peace out.